Well, hello for you, and welcome to our next uh, lesson in logarithms and exponentials. Uh, our topic today, techniques for solving exponential equations, and our goal, I know various strategies to help me solve exponential equations. So we're going to look at a few different types of questions that I could ask you about exponential equations, and the first one that we're going to look at is by far the most common. Um, so, in the last lesson we actually solved exponential equations already. Uh, we did that by forcing them to have an equal base and equating their exponents. Um, but what about if we have a situation like this? 5 to the 2x plus 4 and 3 to the x minus 7. Uh, 5 and 3 don't easily lend itself to putting them in the same base. Uh, writing 5 as a power of 3 is messy and would involve logarithms. So um, we're going to have to bring in logarithms here somehow, but that's not the way we're going to do it. Here's what we're going to do, <clears throat> and I've got this stated as a problem and a solution. So here's our problem. Our problem is we can't simply write 5 and 3 with the same base. It's not easy. It's not simply done. It's possible, but it's not simply done. So here's what we're going to do. Here's our solution. If we take the log of both sides, we can get the variable out of the exponent okay, because of the power law of logarithms. So I'm just going to put that in here. Power law. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to start by taking the log of both sides. <clears throat> and in an explanation, I would like you to say, I'm taking the log of both sides. So we'll say, taking the log of both sides. Taking the log of both sides. Bum, bum, bum. <clears throat> OK, if I take the log of this side, I get the log of 5, and I know that this exponent can come out front. So 2x plus 4. <laughs> and when I take the log of this side, this exponent is going to come out front. So I get x minus 7 out front, and then that's the log of 3. And I'm just going to put in brackets over here that we use the power law. This kind of thing is necessary too. It helps with the communication of the question so that you can say, I didn't just take the log of both sides. As I was taking the log of both sides, I also utilized the power law of logarithms. Okay, now how does this help us? Because I still don't have x's by itself and I've got these logs here. <clears throat> well, the easiest way to do this is to remember that here I have a binomial multiplied by a monomial. Log 5 is just a number. This could be a 2 here. And if this were just a 2, um, we would know, and it doesn't matter whether the 2 is at the front or the back, we could have a 2 here and we would know that we have to distribute it through the brackets. Well, it's not a 2, it's a log 5, but it's still going to have to be distributed through the brackets, just like that. So what we're going to end up getting is 2x times the log of 5 plus 4 times the log of 5. Now on this side, same thing's going to happen here. The log of 3 has to be distributed through the brackets because log of 3 is just a number. <clears throat> you can type it into your calculator and you can find out what log of 3 is, but it's just a number. So this is going to give us x times the log of 3 minus uh, 7 times the log of 3. Okay, And in brackets out here, I'm just going to say we use the distributive law. Distributive law. Okay. Now we want to get x by itself. So I'm going to get all the x's on one side and all of the just numbers on the other side. So uh, the way I'm going to do that is, and I'm going to do that in red here, here's one x. I'm going to leave the x's on this side. So that means I have to get rid of it off of this side. So I'm going to subtract x log 3 on both sides. And 
I want the numbers on the other side. So I don't want this one here. I'm going to do that in green. I don't want this one here. I want to get the numbers over here. This is going to be the side that I have just the x's, and this is going to be the side that I have just the numbers. So to get rid of this one, I'm going to say subtract 4 log 5. And I have to do that on both sides too. This is the same as what you did in grade 9. When we want to get some, rid of something on one side, we got to subtract it off of both sides. So what I have over on this side now is 2x log 5 minus x log 3 because I can't actually put those together. I get a log of 5 and a log of 3. Those are different, so they're different terms. On this side, those things are gone, so I'm left with negative 7 log 3 minus 4 log 5. Okay, now I have all the letter terms on this side and all the number terms on this side, and you're going, well, whoop-de-doo, I cannot put these x's together because they've got different things with them. However, I can factor out an x if I take the x out of these two terms, because x is a factor of this term, this is 2 times x times log of 5, and x is a factor of this term, this is x times log times 3. So I can pull x out as a common factor. Now if I pull x out as a common factor, then I have a bracket that says 2 log 5 minus log 3. And that's going to equal negative 7 log 3 minus 4 log 5. Now, how does that help us? Well, now I can just divide both sides by this thing, because I've got a factor here. I've got x and I've got this, which is just a number. 2 log 5 minus log 3, I could type that into my calculator. I could type in 2 log 5, 2 uh, times, and on this one I have to go 5 log, Oops, I have to go 2 times 5 uh, log, do, 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 do. right there, uh, minus 3 log. That's the number. That's 0 0.9208, but I'm not going to write that. That's messy. It's easier to leave it this way. You might think that looks messy too, but this is actually less messy than this. So if this just said 2x, I would divide both sides by 2. Well, let's imagine that this was a 2, so I'm going to divide both sides by this number. So we'll take, and I'll do this in red too, I'm going to divide both sides by 2 log 5 minus log 3. And this side I'm going to divide by 2 log 5 minus log 3. So what that means, this side they're going to cancel each other out, so that means that my x equals negative 7 log 3 minus 4 log 5 divided by 2 log 5 minus log 3. Now that is really messy, but it's doable. You can plug that into your calculator and get an answer. Let's give it a try. Um, we are going to, let's clear that. Um, I'm going to use brackets, so we'll go bracket um, negative 7 times 3 log uh, subtract 4 times 5 log, and I'm going to end that bracket and go divided by, and use my bracket again, 2 times 5 log minus 3 log, and I'm going to end that bracket and hit equals. And that tells me it's negative 6.666. So that's negative 6.7 approximately. Now you can plug this back in way up here. Take in negative 6.7 up in here. Uh, let's just do that. 5 to the 2 times negative 6.7. So clear, we're going to get 2 times negative 6.7, so 6.7 negative, uh, plus 4, 
equals negative 9.4. So 5 to the negative 9.4. So we go 5 to the exponent uh, 9.4 negative equals um, 0 0.000002. And this is going to be negative 6.7. So I go 3. So this evaluated to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, six zeros and then a two. So let's see if we get the same thing here. So three to the exponent negative um, 6.7 so negative 6.7 subtract 7 and bracket equals not a number. Hold on, what did I do there? <laughs> here negative uh, 6.7 negative 6.7 minus 7 is not right. Uh, 6.7 negative minus 7 is going to give me negative 13.7. And so I go 3 to the uh, negative 13.7 uh, equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros, and then a 2. Okay, so these numbers will be different here because I rounded it to 6.7, uh, negative 6.7. So they won't be exactly the same thing, but for our purposes, they're close enough. Okay, next question. Solve for x. Now, this one is a little bit different. There's no way, I can't just take the log of both sides because of this um, subtraction here. That subtraction screws it all up. So instead of taking the log of both sides, I'm going to do a little trick here. Um, here's the little trick. There's no immediate method to solve this. We have to make a couple of adjustments in order to solve. Notice it's somewhat similar to a quadratic in that the variables are in decreasing order. I've got an x, I've got a negative x, and then I've got no x at all. Um, so here's what we're going to do. If you see this situation here, we want to get rid of negatives. So I'm going to cancel out that negative by multiplying through by 2 to the x. Because when I multiply 2 to the negative x by 2 to the x, remember the rule is if they have the bases the same, we add the exponents. And a negative x plus an x means that that goes to 0. So that's going to get rid of our negative exponents. So I'm going to multiply through by 2 to the x. So if I multiply through by 2 to the x, here's what I get. I get 2x, 2 to the x times 2 to the x, minus 2 to the x times 2 to the negative x, and then equals 2 times 2 to the x. Uh, well, that's not 2 times 2 to the x. It should be 2 to the x times 4. two to the x times four. So I'm just multiplying everything on both sides by two to the x. Uh, now what we have over here is two and then remember I have to add the exponents when they have the same base we add exponents so that's two to the two x minus and the, these exponents are going to cancel each other out so that's going to be two to the zero and that is going to equal um, remember that 4 is 2 squared. So since 4 is 2 squared, that means that we can do, we can add these exponents. So that's going to be 2 um, to the x plus 2. And on second thought, this simplification actually doesn't help us. So I'm not going to do that simplification. I'm going to get rid of this. Um, what I'm going to do is just leave this as 4 times 2 to the x. Now here's why I'm going to leave it like that because I want this to look quadratic. So what I actually have here is 2 to the x squared and then I'm going to subtract this on both sides so I have minus 4 times 2 to the x and then here is a 1 because 2 to the 0 is 1 so minus 1 equals 0.
Now, this looks even more quadratic because I have something squared and then that same something and then that something disappears. So if I'm going to, to carry on with this as kind of an exponent, I'm going to say let 2 to the x equal n. And we've done an, a substitution like this before. I'm going to put an n in here. So now this becomes n squared minus 4n minus 1 equals 0. Now this is something we can handle. Um, th this doesn't factor. No factor, this is not going to work, which means that we have to go to the quadratic formula. So we'll say n equals uh, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac bloop, all divided by 2a. And so that's going to be 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 is 4 squared, negative 4 squared, minus 4 times a is 1, uh, times c is negative 1, all divided by 2 times 1. So that's 4 plus or minus, this is going to be the square root of 20 divided by 2. And we can simplify 20 because I know it has a common factor, or it has a factor of 4, which is a perfect square, and when I take 4 out of the square root, it becomes a 2. So this is 4 plus or minus 2 root 5 over 2, and the 2 divides evenly into those two things, so that's going to be 2 plus or minus root 5. Okay, so my two answers for n are 2 plus root 5 and 2 minus root 5. But, that means that, um, so therefore, um, 2 to the x equals 2 plus root 5 or 2 to the x equals 2 minus root 5. Okay, so this is looking pretty messy. Now, here's one thing that, I'm, that I want to point out here, though. This one here, this is going to be a negative number. 2 minus root 5, because root 5 is bigger than 2. Um, so 2 minus root 5 is going to be a negative answer. And there is absolutely no exponent that I can put on 2 that's going to give me a negative answer. None. If I put on decimals, I'm going to get smaller numbers. If I put on uh, negative numbers, I'm going to get smaller numbers. Like it's just, there's no exponent that I can put on 2 in order to get a negative number. So this one is inadmissible. So that leaves us with 2 to the x equals 2 plus the square root of 5. And now we have to solve for x. So I'm going to take the log of both sides. So that's going to give me the log of 2. And the x comes out front because of power law. And that's going to equal the log of 2 plus root 5. And then I'm going to divide both sides by the log of 2. So that's going to give me x equals log of 2 plus root 5 over the log of 2. Now, we cannot multiply the log through there. Log is not distributable. We cannot distribute it through. This does not mean multiplication in here. This is in the argument of the logarithm. We cannot multiply it through. So this is our answer. And we can punch that into the calculator if we like. Um, 2 plus the root of 5. So we'll go 2 plus 5 root equals. Now I'm going to take the log of that and then divide it by the log of 2. So it's 2.08 approximately. Okay, so there's our answer. Now can we add anything more for communication here? We can say down here n equals this and then say but n equals 2 to the x. So therefore, 2 to the x equals that. So that will help us a little bit with communication. Okay, And this is negative, so it's inadmissible. And we're going to carry on for the next example here. Using a half-life formula. 
an archaeological discovery of an unknown plant fossil has one-eighth of the amount of radioactive carbon as plants have today. If the half-life of carbon is 5,730 years, how old is the fossil? So once again, this has screwed up on me. That should be A0, which means the beginning amount. Now, what we know here is we know that the amount we had divided by, or the amount we have divided by the amount we have is one eighth. Okay, it told us that we have one eighth of the amount that should be there. So if I take this and divide it, I get one eighth. So therefore, one eighth is going to equal, and I could have just divided that on both sides. One eighth is going to equal one half um, to the t over h. Now, t is what we're solving for. How old is the fossil? How much time has passed? And h is the half-life. So this is going to be t over 5,730 years. Now, 1 eighth can be changed very simply into 1 half cubed, which makes this pretty easy to solve for. Um, if you didn't see that right away, you could take the log of both sides and then you'd have the log of 1 eighth, which is going to be messy. But we know that this is a half cubed and this is 1 half to the t over 5730, which means that all we need to do is equate the exponents. So equating the exponents. And that means that 3 equals t over 5730. And so we times 5730 by 3 to get t by itself. So our t is going to equal 5730 times 3. 17,190. 17,190 years old. So therefore, the fossil is 17,190 years old. Uh, and that concludes this video.